11 Tips Every Homeowner Needs to Know About Insurance 1. What it covers A typical policy will pay for damage to your property and your possessions in the event of certain storms, fire, theft or vandalism. Like renter's insurance, it also provides liability coverage if someone gets hurt on your property and decides to sue. Homeowner's insurance also covers shelter costs, so you don't have to face crazy hotel bills if you're temporarily displaced from your house. Homeowner's insurance can protect belongings outside the home, too. If something is stolen from your car, auto insurance won't cover it, but your homeowner's policy likely will. Most policies will cover your belongings when they are traveling with you, Derek says. If you have a $1,200 laptop and it gets lost by the airline, call your insurance agent, right after you filed the claim with the airline, of course. 2. What it doesn't cover. A standard policy has exclusions, including earth movements, landslides, earthquakes, sinkholes, power failure, war, nuclear hazard, government action, faulty zoning bad repair or workmanship, defective maintenance and flooding. Windstorms are typically covered, including tornadoes, although insurance companies exclude tornadoes or hurricanes in some high-risk areas. Water damage is tricky. As a rule of thumb, water from above, rainwater or a burst pipe in an upstairs apartment, is usually covered, but water from below, backtop sewers or ground flooding generally isn't. If your region is prone to floods and earthquakes, you should consider supplemental coverage. 3. Why you should shop around. Before committing to a policy, take the time to research an agent whom you trust, preferably one with good reviews online or via a personal recommendation. It's certainly something that Ramsey I on who struggled to receive benefits following a house fire in November 2008 recommends that prospective homeowners do. I had to deal with a rude adjuster, he says. After complaining assertively to the adjuster's boss, I had finally received a check for the damages, but the process was exhausting. By contrast, Terry Corcoran has nothing but glowing reviews for her adjuster. After a snowstorm caused a major leak in Corcoran's laundry room, an insurance agent came to her home to assess the damage and promptly determined that the entire room needed to be redone. They wrote me a check on the spot for what it should cost, Corcoran says. I was really impressed by how the company responded. Bottom line. Don't just shop for a policy. Make sure you also select the best agent. 4. Which preventive actions can reduce premiums? It may sound like common sense to have a working smoke detector, but did you know that it might also help you land a lower insurance quote? The same goes for a burglar alarm. According to insuranceagents.com, you can reduce your premium by about 5% if you install something as a simple as a deadbolt, and up 15 to 20% for a burglar alarm system. Insurance companies price your premium based on how much risk they foresee so you can reduce the premium by reducing your liability risk, thanks to some smart preventive measures. For example, if you have a pool, you may be able to reduce the likelihood of a claim, and thus, possibly lower your premium, by installing a fence and a pool covert to minimize the risk of a neighborhood kid wandering onto your property and falling in. 5. How replacement coverage differs from market value. There are two key distinctions that every homeowner should know, replacement cost versus market value. Replacement cost covers repairing or replacing your entire home. Market value is how much someone would pay to buy your home and accompanying land in its current downtrodden condition. When you're considering the type of coverage to take out, a policy that's based on market value is typically less expensive but, as State Farm puts it, for a cash-strapped homeowner, buying a policy based on market value offers the best chance to recoup at least partial expenses after a loss. In other words, 
you won't recoup as much in the event of a serious disaster. For those who have a good emergency fund in place, Derek says that there is a way to possibly get more substantial coverage and still pay lower premiums. You might consider getting a policy that covers more in terms of replacing or rebuilding your property, but with a higher deductible. 6. Why you shouldn't wait to file a claim. When buying a policy, make sure to ask about time limits to report a claim, and then abide by them. If you wait too long, you may not be eligible for benefits, especially if waiting has made the problem worse. David Baxter works for a residential and commercial restoration company in Florida, and he remembers a customer with water damage who waited almost a month to do anything about it. When the mold set in, and he decided to call, his insurance didn't cover him because it was outside of the 14-day window required for reporting the problem, Baxter says. 7. Why you should write everything down. Senan Garcia, a lawyer in Coconut Grove, Florida, represents homeowners against insurance companies that failed to pay out on valid claims. He's seen many denied claims because people don't keep good enough records. Homeowners must document everything that occurs during a loss, do as much as possible to mitigate the loss and document such mitigation, Garcia says. In addition to saving receipts, contracts and appraisals, document phone calls by writing down who you spoke to and when. And be sure to stow it in a secure place. Don't want to invest in a safe? Consider keeping digital copies online using a program like Dropbox. 8. How Jewelry is Covered When David Cohen lost his wife's rings, he was believed that his homeowner's policy covered jewelry, but it was only up to a maximum of $3,000. My wife gave me her rings to hold, he says. So I promptly put them in my jacket pocket and then forgot about the rings when I took the jacket to the cleaners. As you can imagine, they were gone. Within three weeks, the Cohans received a check from their insurance company, but they were still out a good deal of money because his wife's engagement ring was worth $6,000 alone. The lesson? When signing up for homeowners insurance, note the limits on jewelry. Most people don't realize that things like wedding rings aren't usually covered by the basic limits in their policies, Derek says. You can get an appraisal at your jeweler, and then consider buying a supplemental policy to cover it. 9. Why Good Maintenance Matters Insurance companies would rather pay as little as possible to repair damage, so they prize early detection and prevention. Deacon Hayes and his wife paid for a routine checkup on their air conditioner because they live in Arizona and wanted to make sure that the system was ready for summer. The specialist told us that the unit was on its last legs because of a hailstorm, Hayes recalls. Thanks to his diligence, Hayes's insurance policy ended up paying for a new $4,000 A.C. unit. According to Derek, one very important thing to keep an eye on is your water bill. If you notice an unusual spiker trend upward, and it's not just because it's 100 degrees outside, and you're watering your lawn more, you could have a leak somewhere, she says. Finding the source early could save you from dealing with a bigger headache when a major pipe bursts. 10. How to save by bundling. One way to save money is to bundle your homeowner's insurance with other policies that you already own. But don't just buy a bunch of policies in order to save money, Derek cautions. For example, it makes a lot of sense to have your car and homeowner's policies with the same company because you'll usually get some kind of discount. However, if you don't have a need for life insurance, don't buy a policy just because the agent says you'll save money on other policies. After all, if you're spending money on something that you don't need, where are the savings? 11. When to file a claim. A large section of Richard Clayman's wooden backyard fence came down in a storm. I didn't think there was any way my homeowner's policy would cover it, and my neighbors assured me that it wouldn't, he says. But he called his insurance company, just in case. 
The agent asked how high, the fence was, what kind of wood it was and how much of it needed replacing. Next thing you know, I get a $700 check in the mail. Teresa Romo has a similar story, a bad windstorm took roof shingles off her house, and she almost didn't file a claim because it didn't feel worthwhile. In the end, she received over $25,000 for a new roof. The obvious mishaps aside, fire, major flood, etc., it can be beneficial to file a claim when in doubt, but there are cautions restrained. Don't file a bunch of frivolous claims, she says. The claims history for your property is also what determines your rates, so it's better not to cry wolf, unless you have a real claim. The repercussion if you file needlessly? A possible uptick in your premium. Thanks for watching the video. Share video to see it all. Subscribe to my channel.